Hello and welcome back to the video darkroom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use responsive design in respect of position. I have another video that explains what responsive design is and that covers both responsive design for position and responsive design for time and I've linked that here. And then the second video in the series of three shows you how to use responsive design in respect of time and I have link that one here but in this video we're going to look at responsive design in respect of position so responsive design in respect of position allows you to create a caption such as this one and when you change the amount of text that is in it you'll see that the shape of the background box changes accordingly and also if we change, for example, the size of the font, you'll see that both the background box and the little line at the side also change consistently. So that means that you can create one caption that you can use in any of your videos. It doesn't matter how much text you want to put in it or what font you want to use. It will always be at the appropriate size for you. And you can also edit any of the other attributes of it such as the colors or the fonts whatever it is that you need to so let's get into premiere and see how to develop a graphic that can be used in all circumstances such as the one i've just shown you so we're in premiere pro and i'm using the graphics workspace here that you can also choose so that you have a similar layout if you want to follow along and make a similar graphic yourself First of all, I'm going to take the text tool, select that and type in the speaker's name and then the speaker's job title. I'm going to, with the text tool still selected, select the characters of job title and I'm going to change the size of that to 70. So I've got it a little bit smaller than the speaker's name. So I'm going to make this graphic a little bit longer so that it stays on the screen for a, a larger amount of time and we can work with the animation in and the animation out. So we now have the um, text of the speaker's name and the job title and we want to put a background to this. So I'm going to um, just in the essential graphics panel choose this new layer button and choose a rectangle. So let's um, move that rectangle down so it's going to be behind the speaker's name and in order to make it behind it I'm just going to pull it down below the speaker's name and now we have the rectangle. It's going to make it the size that we want it. I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the left hand side because I'm going to put a bar there as part of the graphic. So we've got it now pretty much the size that we want it to be. And what we now need to do is connect the text and the background box in terms of responsive design. So I'm going to rename this shape as background box. Just to make it clear what we're dealing with. And you'll see in below it when we have selected the background box that we have an option for responsive design for a position and by default it's connected to the video frame but we want to change it and connect it to the um, speaker's name the text that we typed in this graphic over on the right hand side says how you want to connect it we want to connect it on all sides so i just click on the middle that means it's connected to the top the bottom, the left and the right of the text. And if any of those change, the shape and position of the background box will change accordingly. Let me just demonstrate that to you by taking the text tool again and adding some some additional text so you can see that the background box changed shape accordingly. Now what we want to do is add a little bit of animation. I want the text to animate in from the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an opacity mask to this. So I will click on the rectangle for the opacity mask and you see that the text has disappeared because it's not within the mask. So I'm just going to move it down and I'm going to align it here with the left hand side of that. 
Now I want this mass to be bigger so that it covers whatever size of text we may want. I'll select these two bottom points on the mask just by dragging over them. Make that a little bit larger. And I'm gonna do the same here um, for the, the top two points. So let's just select those and make this all a bit larger that way in case we want to have a really large um, font for the text. And now I'm gonna take the right hand ones and just drag them right out to the, the right hand side of the screen here. Um, so that whatever size of text we have, it's going to be made visible within this box. So that's the box the way that we want it to be. I'm going to move in 35 frames from the left here, which is when the point at which we want the text to be fully in position. I can do that by holding down shift and pressing the right arrow key seven times. And that, that moves me each time I Press the right arrow key with the shift held down, it moves me five frames. So that has now taken me in 35 frames. And what we're going to do now is on the um, on the text, I'm going to just expand that out in the effect controls panel. It's going to move down and I'm going to animate position for the text. So the text is in the correct position. I'm going to move back five frames. Uh, sorry, I'm going to move back 25 frames by holding down shift and moving the left arrow five times. And I'm going to move the horizontal position of the text so that it disappears right off the screen. And that means whatever length of text we have, it will start off the screen and it will animate on. Let's just watch that happen. So that's the way in which the speaker's name um, comes on. I can just go back to the beginning of that. Now, having done that, I want to draw the little bar that will also animate along with the text. I'm going to do that by adding another graphic and I'll choose rectangle and we'll just rename it as the bar that we're going to animate right now. I want it to be a different color. So I'm going to Click on the fill option. I'm going to make it red and say, OK, now it's not appearing on the screen. The reason it's not appearing on the screen is that this graphic has a mask on it. So let me choose the pointer and let me move this down. And you'll see that it appears as soon as it comes within within the mask. So I'm going to try and make it approximately the same size as the background but I'm going to make it very much narrower so that it's just a little bar at the left hand side here. I can move it just a tiny amount to the left. And we've now got the bar. So I'm going to go to the position where the text begins to animate in. It hasn't yet appeared, um, but the bar is at its full size. And I'm going to animate the, uh, the scale of the bar. So let's just open that shape up in the effect controls panel. And let's look at scale here. So I'm gonna animate scale, but I'm going to uncheck uniform scale because we're only gonna to want to animate it in the vertical dimension. So we now have a keyframe um, that indicates the size that it's going to be. I wanna do one thing in which, and that is that I want to link it to the size of the background box in responsive design. So I'm going to just take the bar and under responsive design for position, I'm going to link it to the background box and I'm going to link the top and the bottom because I want this bar to be the same size as the as the as the background box as the background box appears. So let me just go back to that keyframe and now let me go back to the beginning I'm going to just press the home key of the animation and I want to take the vertical scale of this by unchecking uniform scale I want to take the vertical scale of the box down to zero so now if I just click on the timeline press return you'll see that what happens is that the little bar expands to its vertical height and then the speaker's name appears. So we're going to reverse that animation at the end 
um, just in order for it all to animate out the same way that it went in. So in the effect controls panel, I'm just going to press end and that will take me to the end of the graphic. I'm going to se select the this uh, first keyframe, going to hold down alt and move it right out to the end. That means that the bar is going to go back to zero height. Going to move left by 15 frames, which hold down shift and press the left arrow key three times. And I'm going to do the same with the other keyframe. So I've now taken the two keyframes and reversed them and they will now animate out the same way that they animated in. And I want to do exactly the same for the text. So at this point, the the bar is beginning to animate out and that's exactly the point at which I want to have the text completely off the screen. So I'm going to take the first of these two, hold down Alt and move it to here. Then I'm going to move in my 25 um, frames by holding Shift and going left arrow five times. I'm going to take this keyframe, I'm going to move it to that current position. So now let's just press home and let's see how the animation works. And it stays on the screen for a while and animates out. So the animation is complete and I just want to show you briefly how when I go in here that if we change the text you'll see that the, the whole animation still works in the same same way but just with a different size box and um, that matches the text size perfectly. So let me just go to the beginning of the graphic and again just go through it and you'll see that because we have used responsive design for position everything still fits just as we would want it to be. And if I select all of this text and make the font slice size slightly larger you'll see that not only does the background increase in size but the little bar that is used at the beginning of it also animates and remains at exactly the right size. So you've now completed your responsive design for position. We could add to this and just add briefly responsive design for, um, for time and make the whole thing much more flexible. So let's just do that. So basically we want to go to the point at which the animation ends um, it's animated in with the bar and the text. So what we do here is we make sure that nothing is selected in terms of the graphic within the Essential Graphics panel. And you will see then that Responsive Design for Time appears. My technique is normally just to add one second into this. So just type one for the intro and type one for the outro. And you'll see that those areas have um, been marked out here. and in the um, in the effect controls panel. So I'm just going to go to the top of that and I'm just going to move it to this point in time where the animation is complete for the intro. And I'm going to move here to the point where the animation begins to animate out, go back up to the top and change the size of the protected area for the out row. And you'll see now in the graphics that there's there's this area where it animates in and there's the area where it animates out and if we change the length of this to make it much smaller it will stay on screen for a shorter amount of time but the animation speed as it comes in and as it goes out will be the same so let's just play it there you go it animates in stays on the screen and animates out you can make this whatever size you want it to be and the animation is still going to work perfectly you can change the colors, you can change the fonts, you can change the amount of text that's in it and this graphic is still going to work perfectly for you. So that's how responsive design for position works and um, if you want to check out the other videos they're also on my channel. So I hope you find this helpful. If you did find it helpful please give it a like and that will help others find it as well.